here. She's got to feel confident with all those uh, international matches under her belt. Absolutely. Bruntel and Monary, for that matter, they have been two of the most active wrestlers the past two seasons. Forrest trying to get back to the World Championships. She brought home a medal for Team USA in 2021. Bruntel trying to make her first senior world team. She's made a U23 world team several times. And early using the two-on-one is Bruntel. And going to that two-on-one lock position that we see a lot, uh, we've seen a lot today. Mm -hmm. Should be a really physical match. I mean, if you follow Emma Bruntel, you can see that she does a lot of damage to her face at times um, <laughs> and is representing a, a facial brand. Forrest Molinari is also incredibly physical as well. Um, so there should be a lot of brawling in this match. Yeah, brawling's a good way to put it, I think. <laughs> with a little uh, ear mishap here. <laughs> Has to pop the contact back in. We used to see that a lot with Helen Marulis as well. Her contacts would fall out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I, I was always impressed at how they could put it right back in. Matt side uh, without right. a mirror or anything. Coach Diamond Guilford kind of assisting her with, with the phone, the, the front camera. And it's so facto mirror. Mark Perry in the corner for Forrest Molinari. A Sunkissed Kids Wrestling Club athlete out there in Tempe. Molinari really working the head. Now transitioning to the underhook. And again, what we're seeing with the higher weights that are a little bit more familiar with each other, it's a bit hard in the early part of the match to move the opponent out of position. Right. And Molinari does like to use a game plan we saw Macy Kilty use where she'll bang on the head, really try to wear on her, her opponents and capitalize late when they get tired. And I guess we'll see if that strategy works out. Emma Brunso looking in really good condition. There is the shot clock point for Molinari. The first point of the match as we approach the 32nd mark here, remaining in period number one. Both ladies working really hard. Yeah, now it's Molinari getting to the two-on-one. Yep, she needs to get some head position there. She had a nice deep two-on-one, but needed to establish head position to, to utilize it. That does it for period number one. We go into the break for Molinari. Up one to zero. Whole, whole lot of game planning there in period number one. Not a whole lot of action. It's a lot of locking antlers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I, I think similar to our last match, we'll, we'll see things open up here a little bit in period number two. Yes, yeah, so we'll see how much conditioning is a factor here, but... Um, second period really does determine what you've been doing outside of wrestling. Yep.
Molinari so heavy on the head. And Brunzel really trying to work this two on one, but Oop, just gonna need to tabletop that. Forrest dropping. He's gonna try down to keep to that wizard and just gonna sacrifice the takedown on that one. Two offer. Nothing yet though with the wizard. It looked like she released the wizard a little bit and then reestablished it, so. Did we get confirmation? Grounded, no points. Molinari wants two, but grounded the right call. That can sometimes be demoralizing, getting so close to that takedown, maybe even thinking you had it since the whistle did offer two to get no points there, not even a step out. Absolutely, it will go into factor in terms of what Molinari's mindset was. Does she think the referee cheated her out of two points or did she want to confirm whether she received two points to know where she was in terms of strategy? Same position here now as Brunzel hits a slide by and looks for your ankle, but Molinari just drops down to the leg and shelves it on the far side. No points yet. Brunzel's gonna have to get that right leg out if she wants to score this. And her leg and not in great position. And, and sometimes for women's wrestling, it looks scarier than it actually is. We are quite flexible in the hip girdle and, yes. and, uh, and our knees can take a little bit of wear and tear. It does look like she's a little tender on that foot though, on that leg. Nice low single. She needs to get her head up. Post to get your head up and come out the back door. And brings that left arm. Nice. Armor. Really close to a two point she does need to get. And then With two, two and two more on the exposure as well. In a navy ride position right here and possibly another two. Two confirmed, yes, two more. Huge sequence for Emma Bruntol. And a series that Terry Steiner teaches quite a bit in the room. Thirty seconds remaining. So we will likely see Bruntal go into defense mode here. Caution and one offered for interlocking fingers. And gonna be confirmed. Crossbody shot from Alnari. Good sprawl from Bruntal. An official gonna let the clock wind down here in this position. Emma Bruntal takes match one, six to three. It was one sequence where she got it done. The takedown, the turn, and the turn from the Navy ride position. And you can see Vlad is going to cough in her corner, uh, developmental coach originally for Team USA, telling Emma, just calm down emotionally. You still have a lot more work to do. And he's absolutely right. No time to celebrate. You guys go back and forth. Uh, she's back and forth in Molinari all the time. So it's really important to keep your head in the game all the way until the very end. Absolutely. We're going to take a look at the action here from match one. Here is that low single finish from Bruntel. Did a nice job with her head position there on that single. And Molinari just couldn't crawl forward and free herself from this Navy ride position. Not before giving up two turns. And so we are going to once again cut to a break, but don't go anywhere when we come back. It's going to be 72 kilograms. Amit Elor versus Joy Levandusky. <laughs> 